Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and welcome to part three of the Rental Property Manager. In this week's training, I'm going to show you how to create your own income and expense transactions and set any type of income or expense based on a property, based on a specific unit. And we're going to show you how to add attachments and a single selection of any type of property to show you. Also, we're going to show you how to create alerts and reminders so you can create any type of alert or reminder based on those properties, units, or tenants. It's going to be an incredible training. I can't wait. Let's get started. All right. Thanks so much for joining me on Rental Property Manager Part 3. If you missed the first two parts, don't worry. I'm going to include the links down below. We are building this application from scratch. In the first week, we created this really cool uh, dashboard so we could create this menu ability to have a dashboard. Also, we have the ability to add properties and we're also created this really cool tenants and units, income and expense and the alerts and reminders. That was in part one. We created all that in the screens. In part two, we added the ability to add new properties and also add attachments to those individual properties. And we also created this really cool tenant where we can select specific tenants, add attachments to those, create and add new units. In part three, we got a lot more to cover. We're gonna be covering the income expenses. I'm gonna show you how to add income expenses per property or per unit. So we're going to cover that also attachments for those expenses in case you want to attach receipts. I'm also going to go over reminders and alerts, how to create automated reminders and alerts to remind you or how to create these for your own applications. We got a lot to cover. I do appreciate you following these trainings. I'm going to create these every single week from you. If you do like these, I just ask a few things. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel. Click the subscription button below and don't forget to click that notification icon bell. I'll ensure that you get these trainings right to you each and every Tuesday. So I really appreciate that. If you like these workbooks, they're always free. All you need to do is click the link down below, either with your email or the Facebook link, and I'll make sure to send those right to you. I always appreciate your support. And if you do like building these applications, I've got an incredible mentorship program that's going to teach you every step how to not only build these applications, but sell the applications all while I'm building an incredible accounting application inside. And if you want to learn how to do that, I'm going to give you a sneak peek just right now of what we're building inside this accounting application. It's going to, of course, include a full dashboard complete with a profit and loss with drill down capabilities. We've got a trial balance. I'm going to show you how to create that, a balance sheet. We're going to go over that. And also a cash flow report, which can include cash flow counter, aging payables, aging receivables, sales by customers. We've got a net worth graph, bill payments, and a ton more. So that's really cool. That's just on the dashboard. But what about an invoice? I'm gonna show you how to create your own invoices complete with tons of these features and the ability to update invoice, email a save as PDF picture or word, email as attach PDF picture. We're gonna be able to print dynamically, delete, void, apply payments, make it reoccurring, duplicate invoice, and also, if that wasn't enough, we're going to be able to customize it. I'm going to show you how to customize these with a brand new tool. So if you want to customize anything, you can do that just simply by editing it or have your end users do that. Changing the font size, the fill color, the border style, the text format with this amazing pop-up menu. And that's going to be for every type of feature. So there's going to be a really a lot to cover in this. I can't wait. Yeah, we're going to show you how to even change the font colors if you want to do that. And what this does is it provides lots of security so that you can then have your users control control the environment. And these are templates that can be saved. So it's a really, really great feature. And that's only for those people with admin rights that can, because as soon as we finish customizing it, we can see over there, it's going to be completely, those first few columns are hidden. That's it. So that's an amazing invoice. We've got email and automation. You can set email and automation for almost every type of trigger. Got a lot going there. We can enable emails or disable emails. We can have notifications, text. I've got item information, purchase history, invoice history, and a ton more. We've got vendor information, purchase order, bill payments, history, customer information, transfers, create making transfers between accounts. We've got a start screen with a really cool login screen. Been a lot of work on that. Also, if you forget your password, you've got an automatic reset on that. I've got a reconcile statement, really cool reconciling, so you can reconcile any account with its credit card, bank, customer payments, making deposits. I've got a general journal where you can drill down to any specific item or any specific combat entry and view those transactions. I also have intertransactions where you can create checks, 
e-payments, receipts, charges and credits, and a ton more on that. I've also got purchase orders, really cool purchase order, credit memos, you can credit back your customer. I've got chart of accounts where we can drill down inside chart of accounts and see the individuals, and a cool admin section, bill payments, and a ton more. So if you're interested in that, that is a sneak peek into the accounting application we are developing. I'm gonna include the links down below or myexcelmentor.com, myexcelmentor.com, and that'll get you signed up. All right, let's get started on the training because we've got so much to cover. I'm gonna close this out and then we are going to go into full develop mode. I'm gonna show you everything we can inside this rental property. So what we want to do now is we want to go directly into, we've already built the properties, we can already add new properties, we can already add new units through this, but what I want to do is I want to be able to add expenses and income. Now I want to build this out so we can do that. So we want to add new, update, delete, and do all sorts of those things on this. So how are we going to do that? Well, relatively simply, all we need to do is pretty much copy most of the code that we created last week in the units and tenants, and then we're going to update that accordingly. So let's get into that. We're going to go inside the VBA, Visual Basic. We're going to go in here and we're going to focus primarily on the transaction macros. There's nothing here now, but I want to create macros that are going to help us. But the best way to do that is very similar to the units. We're going to make those changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the unit module here. We created this week. That's going to give us the ability to save and update units, add new and load and load all units and do all that stuff. So I'm going to do control A. I'm going to select everything in here and I'm going to do control C, copy that. I'm going to go into the transaction, control A, and then paste that in there. Now that we have that, I'm going to use find and replace to customize this for transactions. So the first thing what I want to do is change anywhere it says unit, I'm going to save it to transactions. So I'm going to use control F. That's going to find feature and I'm going to drag it up here. It's below the screen. So I'm going to look for on this module only notice, make sure you when you do find a place only within the module, not the project. OK, and I'm going to look for anywhere it says unit. I'm going to change it to transaction. So here we go with transaction. OK, so I'm going to replace all within the module and it's going to replace 53 times. That's good. OK, what else do I want to notice that when we're focused on units, units was sheet three, but transactions is sheet four. So anywhere it says sheet three, I'm going to change that to sheet four. So again, sheet three, I'm going to replace this with sheet four, sheet four. OK, and then I'm going to actually we got to cancel out of here and do it once more. So find that again. Control F back inside sheet three to sheet four, sheet three and then sheet four replacing all to sheet four so now that we've replaced everything all those let's see how many we're going to be replacing inside the current module 13 of those we also want to associate with the database right so let's take a look at the database now the database where things are stored in the units right units of tenants is the database focused on sheet eight but transactions are sheet nine so anywhere it says sheet eight inside we're going to change that to sheet nine so cancel this again let's redo it again and then sheet right anywhere it says sheet eight which is the units database i'm going to change that to sheet nine so go into the replace and then bring it up here i'll change that to sheet nine that's going to be it for our find and replace and then uh, replace all okay so within the module we're good to go on that okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the individual we can close that out we've replaced all of those let's just replace all once again okay it's not found good we've done everything we have now let's just go over these we need the transaction row the transaction column the transaction id the attachment row last attachment row last rows long file folder is dialect file path those are all good great so let's just take a quick look but a few things we need before we finish continue on with the code i want to do a fill out a few items within this section here right within this section here because i want to know the property id i want to know the unit id and so on and so forth so we've got the property here this is going to be a drop down list but we've already created that inside this units and tenants so all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy that it's a drop down list i'm gonna go into the transaction i'm simply gonna paste that and if we remember correctly data validation if we take a look at that that's simply the property name so what i want to do is i want to determine what the property id is of this selected property so right here i'm going to put in property id but i also want to know the unit id if there's a specific unit that's selected i want to know the unit id and i also want to know the transaction row right i've got a transaction id right here right so let's just say I put in one I want to know the row of that transaction we can drop this down and I want to know what row that is so that's going to be important I also want to know the next transaction ID what's the next one next transaction ID so we've got to know all that so if you have followed my 
uh, last training, you probably can understand what might be. We do have a named range for transaction ID. That's going to come in handy. Name manager. Let's take a look at what we have. That transaction ID. Good. That's we just got some sample numbers in there. That's going to help us. So what is the next one? Well, the next one's four. But how do we automate that? I'm going to use if error equals if error. In case there's no values here, transaction. I'm going to use the max formula. Max transaction spell that right transaction id the max plus one but if there's nothing it's going to create an error so if there's nothing no data at all i want to put one that means the first available one what that's going to do is put four that's just what i want but i also want to know the transaction row what is the current row of this if, in fact transaction if we look in the transactions database we see that one is on row four so why don't we put that in because i want to know that inside that so let's go ahead and put that in and i'm going to use if error again equals if error in case it's blank i want to keep it blank if it's an error i'm going to use the match formula match what am i matching i'm matching the transaction id right here so i'm going to look up this id and what do i want what is the array is going to be of course the transaction id and i want an exact match okay so if there's an error i want to put empty so that should return it would return one but i don't want one i want the first row so let's view we, we were, uh, had this i'm going to view the formula bar so instead of one i want to put plus three because i want four because that's the first row i also want to know the unit id if there's a specific unit here i want to know the unit id here so that's really important and i also want to know the property id the property id so let's go ahead and write the property id in here so it's going to be equals again if error we're going to use index. I'm indexing the property ID in this case. So index, then we're going to tab there. And then the array again is the property ID because that's what I want to return based on the row. We're going to use match to find that row. What are we looking up? I'm going to look up this property right here and we'll look it up based on the property name. So we have those name range. I want an exact match. So we're going to use zero. And of course, it's going to be column one. If there's an error, I want blank. So there it is. That's what we want there. Let's just move that over. I'm going to left justify that. And then I'm also going to color these so that they stand out a little bit. Just give it that yellow and then borders all around it. OK, the last thing we need is the unit ID. I want to know what the unit ID is. And basically, this is not going to be a form. I'm just going to place that directly in there through VBA. And that's sufficient. The unit ID is going to be placed in here, actually. The, the unit ID is going to be placed here. So if we select a specific unit here, it's going to, I'm going to put that ID right here automatically. So. We'll say that the recent transactions are going to be here. Actually, the transaction IDs are here. So when I select a specific transaction, I want that transaction to load up there. I want to put in the transaction name, the date, and so forth. So let's put in some test information, and then we're going to add the macro. So let's just put in something like May Rent. Okay, we're going to put in unit one, two, three, right? What we really want is a drop-down list based on this, right? So I want to I want to put in a, determine what is the units for this specific property. If I select a different property, I want to know all the units based on this property. So how do we do that? Well, in the last training, what we want to do is create a dynamic named range based on the selected property here. So based on that property, although we just have one, I want to create a dynamic name range of only the units in that. So that would come from our units database right here. So inside that, if we select a specific property, a property ID, we run an advanced filter on that, our results are going to come here. Now we take a look at that and that, that property here, we got a property ID of one. We just have two units and here's our unit numbers here. So we already have this advanced filter. So all I need to do is pretty much create a named range, a dynamic named range based on the values here, then run our advanced filter, and then our results are automatically be dynamic. So if we have a different property, let's just put in a different property. Let's just put in up, let's put in a unit ID of three, just add one here, property ID of two, and let's put in Lisa apartment. And then um, we can then just put in A104, so we have that's fine that's fine for enough so we've got a different at least we have some different information so we can see how that works so let's create a named range we'll call this unit name so i'm going to go into the name manager i'm going to go into new and then call it we're just going to call it unit names and then i'm going to make it dynamic so we want to use offset equals offset and i'm going to start it out at the top row just in case there's no data and then i'm going to go one row down comma comma count a we're counting the values in that Again, we're starting at the head row, so I'm going to highlight all those. I'm going to go to a very large row in case there's a lot, 999. And then I'm going to count, but I don't want to count the header, so I need to subtract 1. And then comma 1 for the column. Okay, let's tab out and tab back in. That's using the tab key out and using the shift tab key back in. We're looking for the dancing ants. We're going to make sure that they're around the data. That is correct. Unit names is our new 
named range. So I'm going to close that out. We're going to go back into transactions. We're going to call this data validation here. Going to be based on that unit name. So data validation list equals unit names, just the one we created here. Click OK. So we see that that's going to be a drop down list. Now, all we need to do is run that advanced filter when we change it here. Right? When we change it here, it's automatically it's going to change that automatically. So how do we do that? Well, let's go into the properties and let's go ahead and add new and then update. And then what we're going to do is we're going to load those properties. So we have a different property here, Fredder Center. So we've got that property here. And what we're going to do, why don't we just add a brand new property so we can see a few different ones. I've got that other one created. So let's create, let's add new. Let's go and click add new. And then we'll just create a uh, Debbie's building and then type we'll just call it residential and then just give it a start date one one okay we don't need too much information here we're going to save that up okay then now we've got that now we've got different properties so we're going to update that so we've got a lot so now we've continued go going on so we've got fretters and david we've got a few new ones we could use that actually i want to change this so now we've got units and tenants here and now we've got a different we've got debbie's apartments here so we can change that so what i want to do is i want to automatically when i change this i want to run that in advanced filter so that those units change automatically based on that so let's go ahead and add a unit and tenant for that debbie so let's go ahead and add new we're going to select on debbie's building here and attend lisa smith and then we'll add that unit so that's let's just a 104 okay so now we've got a unit type that doesn't matter so we're good so we're going to save that and saved okay so now we're good to go we got to make sure to clear out this name range that's important got to make sure that clears all out so that's a little issue let's just cover that right now so inside the units i want to make sure Sure. when we're clearing out the unit macros and if I remember this correctly clearing that we need to M4 should be a colon through M11 okay M11 so we want to clear those out all the way through not comma M4 all the way through M11 clearing that out using the colon so when now when we add new it gets cleared out that's important so great so we've got that but we got to load it we also want to clear out C through D I want to clear these out too making sure that we do that so it's gonna be D4 C okay C want to clear those out too clicking the running that's gonna add new okay so that clears out that's what we want so we select a property here perfect okay that's exactly what I want so let's go back into the transactions we're gonna focus this on this when we change that I want to make sure that that name rate also changes. so how are we going to do that we're gonna run that advanced filter so let's go ahead and inside the VBA and start adding that in that's gonna be a transaction focused on the transaction so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna write that right up sub we'll call it transaction and then we'll call it get unique units great so now we've got that so we're going to focus on sheet eight i want to focus on the units database right with sheet eight that's the one I, that is the sheet that i want to create those that's the one we did automatically so units database this is sheet eight here this is where i want to run the advanced filter determine the last row we've got the property id put the property id in here that property is going to id is going to come directly from b3 here what i'm going to do is i'm going to place that right here i'm going to determine the last row run our advanced filter our criteria is here get the results unit and then automatically as those results are placed automatically those units are here so actually we got it we, let's see we kind of messed up our database here so let's put that in there now we've got the right tenant let's, all right so that's going to work just fine we don't need that all right we've got two two properties a two tenants here cool different units here and i've got now a unit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run that let's go ahead and run that right now i'm going to go into the vba here and start writing the code for that so the first thing we want to do is dimension i want to get a dimension we need a last unit row so let's make sure we put that in there too if we don't have it there let's take a look to see if we have it. we do need that so last unit row as long we've got that so that's going to be the last unit based on sheet eight so what is it last unit row and we're going to say equals a equals and a xr up row dot row that's going to be the last unit row last unit row I want to make sure that it's not less than two if it is if or less than four if the last unit row is less than four then exit sub that means we have no data exit sub okay so we've got that written assuming is why is that because if it's less than four right if you then we there's nothing we can do we want to make sure there's actually data so we can run our advanced filter assuming that there is data we can move on now what i want to do obviously i got to place that property id right in here where's it going to come from going to come from right here in b if for some reason b3 is empty obviously we can't do that so we want to make sure that it's not empty so actually we can write that here or right or what sheet do we focus on we then sheet four dot range 
What is the range? B3 dot, let's put in the code, B3 dot value equals empty, then exit the sub, right? If either one of those conditions are true, we, we can't do anything else, okay? Or, get rid of this, or, okay, so we're good now. So if the last thing is less than four or sheet four B3, then exit the sub. Assuming that those are not, then we can move on. Dot range with sheet eight dot range, O3, O3, that's where our criteria is located in dot, it's equals sheet four. Okay, we don't need to write it again because we've got it right up here. So we just clear that out. So there's sheet four right here. So it's right here, B3, B3 value. So it's gonna equal that. That's where our property ID look at. Equals B3 value property ID. Okay, so now we've got that. Now we're ready to run our advanced filter. So what I've done is taken this property ID and I've placed it directly inside our units database right here in 03. Now that we have that, we can run our advanced filter based on that. So we're going to run that advanced filter on our units. So let's go ahead and go into here and run it. So dot range and starting out with a3, right? We wanted A3. It's going to be our transaction. Let's slide this over because it's going to be A3 right here all the way over to, well, really, we don't need to go over the last row. We're just focused on the unit. So really, all we needed to do is run that advanced filter to the units because we don't want any other information other. So we can run it through A3 through D and the last row. So we can do that. So actually, I got an advanced filter saved up here. We can do that with auto hotkey. That's auto hotkey that's going to use it. I typed it out. It's going to be, I'm going to change this to A3. And then I'm going to change it to D, column D, and it's going to be the last, in this case, the last unit row. So let's update that. Unit row. I'm going to use our criteria range. Criteria range in this case is going to be 02 through 03. So let's update that 02 through 03. I used auto hotkey. It's a free software to automate that in case you didn't see. And what about our criteria? Our results actually are going to be go through Q2 through R2. So in this case, we're going to update that from Q2 through R2. R2. What that's going to do is automatically put, not F, R2. It's going to automatically put those units for that associated property directly here. Okay, so we've got our units listing out and that's going to automatically do it. So good, we're good to go there. That's all we need to do. That's it. So we need to run this, but when do I want to run this? I want to run this on uh, just two conditions, right? I want to run this when a user makes a change to the transactions, right? When we make a change to G3. So it is G3 that we're going to make the change. So let's go inside there and make that change inside the on sheet code when a user actually makes a change to G3. So we're going to go back up here, go into the transactions, right? And of course, we're going to focus on the worksheet and we're actually making a change. So it's change, worksheet change. So if not, right, the user makes a change to what? G3 target range transactions. G3 is nothing. And I want to make sure that range g3 does not equal blank dot value does not equal empty in that case then what i want to do i want to run that specific macro that's going to get those units so let's go ahead and save our work and take a look at see how we go so now franklin center we're going to see that we've got the units here one two four we make that change to debbie's and we see let's see the change okay good the only thing that i probably want to do is clear out this one i5 i want to make sure to clear out because anytime we make a change i don't want the unit to be saved in there so i think that's kind of important so it's working just fine let's just go ahead and clear out this i5 i want to clear that we can do that inside the macro that we just created inside this macro here so the last thing what we want to do is do that we'll we'll just copy this portion here sheet four we're going to change it and we're going to put it to clear contents so i'm going to change it to clear contents clear contents and make sure that it's not instead of B3, we're going to put I5. Okay, that's going to clear it out. And that's exactly what I want to happen. We'll tab that out. Let's take a quick look, make sure there's no issues. Now, when we change that, we want to make sure that's, that unit's cleared out. So it's going to automatically clear out. Good. Okay, so now we can select a different unit, change in the building. Now we have a dynamic dropdown list based on the property. Great. So let's continue on. We've got a date here. Let's put in the date. That's fine. Transaction test notes paid by and then we need to determine whether it's an expense this is an income so we'll put in the income here because it's rent paid paid by tenant and then amount let's just say 500 great so we've got that but now what i want to do is i want to be able to save that so let's focus on the next macro available which is called transaction save update so this is what we're going to focus on we'll take a look i'm going to bring this up here so we can see it a little bit better and then what I'll do is I'll go in and we'll we'll just double check it and make the updates as needed. We got to make sure that G5 is not M G5, right? I want to make sure that 
G3 and G5. We can't have, both of those are really important. Those can't be empty. So G3, right? We want to want that empty. G5, we don't want that empty. And then let's go ahead and put missing property uh, transaction name. And probably we're going to need amount. And uh, I think the income or expense is really important. So we need to also make sure that I9 and K9 are not empty as well. Those are uh, really critical. So we need that. So let's just copy this here and then put an add an or in here or and then paste those in and then just change the fields. I9 and K9. So that's it. I9, I want to make sure that's not empty, and then also K9. So those four fields are required before we can actually save a transaction. So please make sure to add in, let's just update this, add all required fields. And we can put in, let's see, property, uh, let's see, name, type, and amount. Okay, so we can let the user know which fields those are required. Okay, so that's it, exit the sub. All right, we want to make sure that we determine is it a new record or not. The transaction row is going to tell us if it's a new record or not. Why is that? Because as soon as I delete this, it's going to tell us automatically this is blank. So we know that. So let's go ahead and go into the transaction database, clear out our data. Just We don't need that anymore because I want to make sure we do it. And then we go back into the transactions. We see that the next transaction ID is 1 because there's an error on the max formula because there's nothing there. So it's going to revert to 1. So we understand that. Now let's continue on. So if B4 is empty, which in this case it is, then it's a new record. In that case, the transaction row is going to be sheet 9. That's our transaction database right here. That's what I want. Transaction database, the first available row. Perfect. K3 is going to equal the next transaction ID. K3 equals B5. Let's take a look at that. K3 equals B, in this case, B, it's B6, right? And our next transaction is B6. Let's make that update. So equals B6. Now, what about if it's existing? If it's existing, it's going to be in B4. It's going to actually be B5. So B5, actually, I need to update both those to B5 and B5, right? So B5 is empty, right? It's B5 is the transaction. This is going to contain our unit ID. This is going to contain our transaction row, okay? So let's update that and go ahead and continue on with there. We also need to make a change. When we make a change to here, I want to make sure that that unit ID is placed here. So we can use that with a formula also if, if we want to. So we can do that with VBA. VBA or formula, there's a few ways to do it, but let's go ahead and do it. Let's go do it with VBA. We can do that. Either one would work fine. So let's continue on. So now that we know the transaction row is going to be located in B5, the transaction row of B5 is empty. We've got that covered. We're going to focus on our data mapping now. So what do we want? We've already mapped our data, and we did that in the first part here. So the transaction database, not there. Let's oh, Here it is. K3, here's our data mapping here. So the transaction ID is already going to be in there. We should put that in there automatically. When do we want to put it? I want to put it in if it's the new record A and the transaction equal B6, the next transaction. It's already going to be there. So we don't need to do row one, but I do want to start out B3. So I'm going to put it all in here. I'm going to load it all in here from two all the way to column. Let's say equals column what column are we going to we're going all the way to 10 so 2 to 10 that's the one we're going to save i'm going to take whatever's in b3 whatever's in b4 whatever's in g5 i'm going to place it right down here so that's all we need to do let's continue on with our code so 2 to 10 we know we're going to 2 to 10 let's change this to 10. sheet 9 the transaction row transaction column equals range right sheet 9 cells 1 why is this row 1 this is row 1 because this is where we're taking the information from our transaction row one right here so that's it so all i'm going to do is look on sheet four and put whatever's in b4 here whatever's in g5 put it here that's it so we've got that going on continuing back so we've got the data mapping pretty much done that's all we have to do i want to put existing group that's the existing group that means what we're going to do is the button set remember if we have an existing group that's the button set it's going to show add new save update and then we also have a new group which is going to be the add new group okay so we have those two in this case it's no longer a new one so we need to hide the new group and we need to show the existing and then we put transactions saved or updated that's sufficient let's go ahead and save our work and then we're going to assign this macro here this macro i wanted to assign to two different buttons because it's both for save and update so it's this update button i'm going to hold down the control i'm going to right click here assign the macro to that which is the update button and then click ok 
let's go ahead and drag this down I also want it on the save button let's size that accordingly it's a little bit stretched out here okay that looks pretty good okay so I want it also on the save button so holding down the control again clicking right click here and then we're gonna assign that same macro to the save button so pasting that click OK and then these two I pretty much want at the top I'm gonna center these and I'm going to center them here because I want them directly on top of each other because they're not going to be displayed at the same time. Now all I have to do is click, uh, in this case, save or update. Both of them say macro, click save. Okay, let's fix this transaction row four, transaction column. Let's see with transaction column. Let's see what the issue is. All right, when you see something like this, it's relatively easy. It just means we have a missing range. So generally, this range is for one. Let's look at the transaction 11, right? You see, obviously, I changed it to 102. And that's not going to work. There we go. That was sufficient, right? Obviously, the reason is, here's what happened. It got to 11 right here, column 11. It's looking for a range. It's not found. Where's the range here? There's no range, and it's going to debug. Obviously, we're going to go only to 10, so that's fine. So we're good to go. So now it's 10, so we were good to go. We can refresh that. Now let's update that. Okay, good. We created it perfectly. We can delete the extra line. Just added it new. And let's go ahead and take a look in that, making sure that it's set up into the transactions. We got the only thing we need to do is I need to put that transaction here in K3. That we want to make sure that transaction goes in K3 and it comes directly from our transaction ID. So we need to put that in there, especially for new record. K3 equals B5. We don't want to put the transaction row. I want to put B6. What I want to do is I want to put the next transaction ID six. That's important. Okay, so that would have added to one right here. So now in the next one is going to take whatever the next one b6 k3 is going to equal b6 so we're good to go on that we just needed to update that that's fine so we can save our work and we can just add a brand new let's add a new transaction because we're going to need a new new one let's go ahead and write the macro for the add new while we're at it so continuing on add new we're going to check some of the ranges here and double check to make sure we're clearing out the right fields d4 these are recent transactions d4 through d11 we need to clear that out so that looks good i3 in this case right so in this case we don't want i3 i want g3 i want to clear out the property so let's change that to g3 and we already have g3 here k3 that looks good so we don't need this extra one here and then we also want i5 right let's go ahead and look yeah we need i5 here we also need g5 here we'll make sure that says g5 let's put in g5 here i5 here that looks good missing one here k3 that looks good okay good i think we're good g7 through k7 g7 through k7 that looks good we also want g9 let's put let's go on the right g9 i want i9 and i want k9 all cleared out so we've got g9 i9 and k9 g11 and then i11 we don't have any 11 so we can clear that out we're not worried about that in this nothing there on that m4 again make that correction through m11 that's going to clear out our attachments here m4 through m11 okay we're good to go on that now we can focus again existing group good add new so now what we can do is assign this macro transaction add new copy that control c and then what we're going to do is just assign that so clicking on here and here assigning that macro here pasting that in clicking OK all right so click add new perfect that's what we want how about cancel let's see cancel what I want to do is I want to add cancel in I also want to put in the recent transaction so we've got some more macros to light let's go ahead and just add in another property here Debbie's let's go ahead and add another transaction let's call this February rent and we have a her unit select a unit for them and then the date let's see one let's actually it's February let's just keep it in January so we can do everything in January I'll keep everything in the same month and then pay by tenant and then the type let's say this is going to be income right because it's and then the amount of 450 so we've got that I'm going to click save on that so transaction saver updated good let's go ahead and look in our transactions database we've got transaction ID a different property ID we've got to update the unit ID I want to make sure that that's put in so let's go ahead and add in the functionality that's going to add that unit ID right here so we can put in that so there, like I said there's two ways to do it let's go ahead and put in that index match form we'll use that go back in the transaction and then say equals if error index we're going to use unit ID unit we're indexing the unit ID I want a match formula I'm going to base it on a specific unit I'm going to base it on this unit here and then we're going to look it up inside the unit names exact match we want that zero 
close that and then of course the column number okay if there's an error i just want a blank all right that's sufficient enough that'll save it all right so now we click update it's going to save update and go back into the specific database here we have a one okay so now the unit id is now saved just the way i like it so we've got that we've got it saved we've got it updated now we want to make sure that we've got it ability to add new update and we're going to do delete and a few other macros i also want to load in the recent transactions i want to add in the attachments for that so let's continue with on with the macros so transaction load when i select a specific transaction i want to load in the recents first obviously we need to do that and i want to load in the transactions so let's go ahead so after add new let's update the transaction load that's exactly what i want to do so b4 we need to make sure check if b4 is empty obviously in this case b5 because that is our transaction row b5 is our transaction row and that's going to be based on the transaction id here so please select the correct transaction we can say transaction from the list next up so what we're going to do is transaction row is going to be of course in b5 that's going to set our transaction we're going to actually i'm going to go from 3 to 10 in this case 3 to 10 because i want to we'd only go to columns 10 sheet 9 this is correct so everything's good there all right so i like it and then we have transaction attachment we're going to be writing that macro as well transaction load transactions this is what i want i don't need that extra load transactions what i want to do is i want to take all the recent transactions and i'm going to load them in here with a formula so how do we do that okay well that's just simply with a very simple macro so we can get on that so what I want to do is let's go ahead and call the transaction. Let's call it load recent transactions. So we'll underscore that and then call it load recent transactions. Load recent because we're recent transactions. First thing I want to do is clear some cells out. C4 through D. Remember, I'm going to put the transaction IDs here so I know what to load. And I'm going to put the transaction name here. And eventually these can be either hidden or we can change the font color to make them disappear or not appear clearly <laughs> okay if the transaction row what i want to do is i want to run an advanced filter obviously so the last transaction row is going to be based on what sheet sheet nine right we're going to go through advanced filter if the last transaction row is less than four then we're going to exit the sub now what i want to do is i want to make sure since what i want to do is i want to load all of the recent transactions inside here from here basically i want to load all the recent ones so i want to make sure that we don't have any type of criteria or any type when we add an advanced filter in the future i'm going to be adding an advanced filter on here so the first thing i want to do is delete any criteria why do i need to delete criteria because what i'm going to do is i'm going to run an advanced filter i want to make sure that we don't our advanced filter is not going to have any criteria on this so we want to delete any if they exist if they don't exist it's going to create an error so we're going to wrap that in on error zoom next so the first thing what i want to do is dot names names and then in this case we're going to call this criteria that's something that's automatically be created when we run an advanced filter criteria dot delete okay and then on error go to zero so then on error resume next actually on error go to zero on error go to zero all right we're good to go there now that we have that what do i want to do i'm ready to run my advanced filter so we can get rid of this we don't have any criteria on there and the reason I want to do that is because I want to notice by date. I only want the most recent transactions. We don't know what dates are going to be entered here. So let's go ahead and add some results because we're just going to, we're not using any criteria. So let's add some results inside here. So we'll call this results. And then we're going to call this the date because I want the date. So the best way to do it is to make sure date copy this. Right? I'm going to copy because they have to be exact. The transaction ID, I want that. Remember, I need to load that. And I want the transaction name. So that's the results. That's what I want. I want, I want to pull this up i want to get all the information here then i want to sort based on date and then what i want to do is i want to pull only the transaction id and the transaction name bring it over into that so we can merge and send this give it a good look and then give it a, a, just a similar color so we are consistent on that so now that we have that so what i want to bring it over so i want to bring those results from n let's call this n2 through p2 so that's where i want to do on my advanced filter so we know we're going to run this all the way from a3 and i don't i only need the last thing i need is a transaction name so we can stop at d so again i want the date actually we need to come all the way to f because we need the date the id and the name so we're going to come all the way from a through f is where we're going to have our information a through f is where we want it and we're going to base it on the last transaction row advanced filter we don't have any criteria none at all so i'm going to just all all the ones recent so i'm going to clear all that out i'm going to copy that to range n2 through p2 so n2 through p2 
so now we've got that so now what i want to do is i want to bring in the transaction details inside that but before i do that i want to sort them right? i want to make sure that they're sorted so how do we do that well the first thing we want to do is make sure that we clear all the sort fields so we're going to sort based on the dates or so i want to do that so let's focus on that with dot sort we're going to do some things with that door set sort by date and then i want the first thing i want to do is clear the sort field so sort fields dot clear clearing that sort fields then what i want to do is i want to add the key so dot sort on okay sort fields dot add sort fields dot add and what are we adding we're going to add a key so the key is equal to and then i'm going to specify the sheet again sheet because i'm on with sort so i need to specify the sheet nine dot range n3 is going to be the first value n3 that's our first date that we want to do n3 and that what do i want to sort on i want to sort on the value so n3 comma sort on equals xl sort on the values sort on values Remember, we're sorting on the values comma in the order what about the order i want descending order colon equals descending so in this case it is going to be descending so now we've got them sorting on descending and then i want the data option the data option is going to be equal to normal xl normal okay we're going to sort them on normal that's it for that what about the range dot set range i need to set that range what's it going to be it's going to be sheet nine i want to set them on based on dot range n3 all the way to p and the last transaction row minus one why is minus one because you notice our original data starts in four but now we're going to three so p and the last transaction row minus one that's it now next thing dot apply okay that's it that's all we have to do once we get this now they can be sorting so that means the most recent is going to be on top the least is going to be in the bottom and that's just what i want so that means anytime we add a new one it's going to go out now all i need to do is bring that data inside our transaction so how do we do that sheet four c4 through d and let's go ahead and just put in get rid of this 11 right we know we're starting on four so it's going to be c4d and the last transaction row dot value equals in this case we don't want to bring in the date i only want to bring in the the id and the transaction name so it's going to be o3 through p and the last transaction row minus one o3 through p okay, let's go one delete one more p right and the last transaction row minus one bring in the transaction details bring in those and then that's it so that's all we have to do let's go ahead and save that work and then see if there's any issues run this here okay variable we need a variable let's go ahead descending xl descending xl okay all right take a look at that continue on okay and then dot apply not application dot apply too quick there and then run that again check for errors and then let's take a look all right this has got to be sort normal right just not just normal sort normal continuing on that should be it we're good to go on that now we're sorted properly and we'll go back into the transactions and take a look we've got the recent transactions perfect now all i want to do is i want to select on a specific recent transaction and i want that transaction to load up here so why don't we write that right now okay let's go ahead and write that macro now okay so it's gonna be transaction load that's the one right here transaction load first thing we want to do is we want to make sure b5 is not empty we need a specific transaction id located here i'm going to put the transaction i want to make sure that b5 the transaction row is not empty right we need to load that so b5 equals empty please select a transaction we did go over this but i want to make sure we're going to add a little bit to this we now that we know the transaction row notice that we've saved the property id and we've saved the unit id which is exactly what we want and we've saved this inside the transaction database i've got the transaction i've got the property id i've got the unit id but i don't want just that i really want the unit let's just change this to one so we can add one not 12. so what i really want to do is i want to make sure that the property name gets loaded i want the unit name i don't want the ids so how do we do that well we can use find feature and we can get to that so let's do something like that inside the code so we can get instead of those ids i want the actual names we're starting this actually i'm going to start it from column four so i want to load it from column four starting with four the transaction id is going to be there already the property id we're going to take that i'm going to take from the 
property ID. I'm going to look up the property name based on the ID and I'm going to place that property name directly inside our G3. And I'm going to do the same thing for unit. I'm going to look up that unit ID and I'm going to place that unit directly inside I5. Okay, so let's do that right now. Let's write that additional code so we can dimension. So we're going to dimension, let's call this dimension found property as a range. And I also want to do found unit as range okay so that's going to help us as we look for that we're going, to, we're going to use the find comment so we know this so where is the unit id so the first thing what we want to do is i want to set the found property so set found property is going to be based on what based on our property database it's going to be equal sheet seven dot range and we have a named range it's called property id right property underscore id that's the name range that we're using so i'm going to look inside that range and what do i want to look for? i want to use the find comment and but what do i want to find i want to find whatever is in notice we've gone here but we've got the transaction row already but what are we looking for i'm looking for when we're loading it in whatever is in column b and the transaction row that's what i'm looking for whatever's there so find so again our transaction database is our sheet nine dot range b and the transaction row dot value that's what i'm looking for what if it's found is if it's found then if not found property is nothing that means it's found double negative then what do i want to do and i want to take that property name and i want to place it in there how are we going to find that property name well that property name is located inside our property database it's located on column b and the row the row it's been found on okay so we can find that so our property database is sheet seven then in this case we're going to put it in sheet four so we're already in sheet four dot range this is where do i want to place it where do i want to place it i want to place it inside our transactions right here i want to place it directly in g3 so let's put that first dot range g3 g3 dot value equals what where it's found equals our property database sheet seven dot range b that's where our property name is and what's the row found property dot row dot value that's the property name now we can do the same thing for units pretty much simple so i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste it here but in this case it's not property it's unit set found unit right that's the one with unit this case and the units of course are not on sheet seven the unit database is located on sheet eight so we're going to change that to eight and we also want the unit ID. So the unit ID is right here. So that's the named range we have. We can double check those, making sure those correct, or otherwise it'll create it. And of course, we're gonna find, what am I looking for? I'm looking for finding those units on B, and this is not B, it's C, right? I'm looking for sheet nine C, C, that's correct. Sheet nine, now where, where's that unit ID? That unit ID is saved right here, right here in column C. That's where I'm looking. So we're gonna find that unit ID and then we're going to place it so if it's found if found unit is nothing then range not g3 this time right we're going to be placing that directly that unit name directly inside i5 so i5 is where we want to place that on so clear that out i5 is going to equal not sheet seven because our units are located on sheet eight our unit database is eight so we can put that here and let's say i think it's column c we'll double check that in a second c and the found unit row and then let's call this property name and then we'll call this a unit name okay so we've got the memo right okay unit name so let's take a look inside our units database c obviously see the unit number is d actually so d is where you want it d is where we want it so let's put that in d is where our unit name is located and so once we have that that should allow us to load it in so i'm going to save that now that everything else from column four on our transaction from column four all the way to the last column in this case column 10 right column 10 is going to load up accordingly inside the cell so here in this case when these we're placing these values when we save them but when we load them i'm taking the property ID, i'm extracting the property unit from the property name from that i'm extracting the unit name from that and i'm placing them directly inside the appropriate cells why do we not want to place it in b3 and b4 because we have formulas there i've got a formula there i don't want to erase that formula i want a formula here i don't want to erase that formula i want to take the property id as soon as i put that property name or as soon as i put that unit name in here these unit property id and unit id are going to generate automatically so i'm glad we got that out of the way now what i want to do is actually load that specific transaction when i select on something okay so d let's select on that let's change it to selection change 
what is the macro that we actually want to run is this transaction load so i'm going to copy that we're going to go inside the unit so inside the transaction sheet right here and it's located here in sheet four and then it's going to based on selection change so it's going to be based i want to make sure that so if not right if we're making a selection change based on let's say all the way from d4 through d and up let's say d4 all the way through d99 we can use a large number nothing and right it's got to be another condition and range i want to make sure that c contains a value c or we can do this range c and the target dot row dot value does not equal empty right that because that's where our m dot empty then what do we want to do i want to do a few things the first thing what i want to do is i want to take whatever's in c and i want to place it directly in k because when i do that when i change that it's going to change that transaction row then i have a good transaction row i know what i'm going to load up so that's just what we're going to do so first thing we want to do is in let's see range k3 dot value equals in this case range c and the target dot row dot value that is our transaction id okay the next thing we're going to run the macro transaction load run macro to load transaction okay so there we go we're going to check for issues or bugs i'm going to save the work as we always do and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this and it looks like it loaded up just right the attachments came from there we do need to run the attachment load i want to run that up that's not updated yet we didn't get to that no problem but everything looks good we're actually loading it just right okay good so i'm going to update the trend we haven't loaded any attachments but we didn't update that code yet either we didn't get to that so no problem all right good the only thing i would like to do is again add a conditional formatting i like to know when we've selected something i want to know it just like we did there so let's go ahead and highlight this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into home conditional formatting and then we're going to add a rule here so new rule and we're going to base on two conditions use a formula two conditions equals and two conditions the first is we want to make sure that the transaction name is not blank so we want is not empty the second is i want to see whatever d and the row selected so d we're going to get rid of that dollar sign before the four because we want it for every single row below that equals whatever is in transaction name that's it so those are the two conditions i'm going to format that accordingly and what do we want to do i'm just going to give it similar to fill as we did before fill effects and then we'll use some recent uh, colors here i think we use this one and then we use maybe just a little bit lighter one here maybe a little bit darker we did use an additional color here so let's go a little bit lighter that'll come prevalent before a little bit lighter here we can change the colors that's what i like so this is good click ok and then i want to give it a font of bold and white so we'll give it that white color here's those two colors we've got them now so that's what i like so click ok and now once we have that let's go oh we have to apply the conditional format conditional formatting I applied to the wrong cells let's go ahead and see all of them on the cur current sheet and apply that what are we applying to we're applying it to here that entire range we can go higher on that one there we good we're good to apply that click OK now we just need to update these again and may change that back to G4 that's what should be and make sure this is G4 right before making sure those are both four and we're good to go well, actually this one's four four here and this should be five sorry five and five okay we want to start it out when we change that apply to it changes it here automatically keep in mind when you make changes to this apply to right it changes automatically so take a look at that g5 does not equal empty d4 and click okay and click apply and now we've got it covered okay so now when we select something we've got that nice little color so we know exactly which transaction has been selected so as mentioned we got to add delete and the attachment so let's do this right here all right inside our vba code let's go ahead and take a look inside our transaction load we've got that that's working really good but we got to focus on the attachments and load recent transactions delete we need to get that in let's go ahead and are you sure you want to delete this transaction let's update that and vb yes no delete transaction then exit the sub okay good all right now what we want to do if sheet four b4 is empty then select a transaction to delete transaction and this is going to change to b5 right that's our row transaction to delete okay but this is in this case b5 holds our transaction row b5 right here so how do we do that so we could just make sure that that's updated to b5 set b5 to our transaction row here as well inside sheet 9 transaction row delete okay transaction add new perfect now transaction add attachment this is going to be relatively easy we just need to make some updates based on the transaction id so how are we going to do that 
All right, so let me walk you through that. So we're setting the file attachments just as we did previously, but this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the attachments ID. This is gonna be located in sheet two. Remember sheet two, our properties holds our next attachment ID located in B6. That's always gonna keep track of it. So that's fine, just as we want it to be. But the transactions we want to load, I also want to load the property ID and the unit ID. I want to make sure that that's saved with that specific attachment. So sheet two, we're going to focus on our, this time we're sheet 11. This is our transactions, our attachment database, sheet 11. So we're going to focus on that. And we also want to make sure in this case, we want to put in a transaction ID and a unit ID. So we want to make sure that's saved there appropriately. Okay, so how do we do that? All right, so sheet A, we know is going to get the attachments ID. That's based on sheet two. B, we want B is going to take our property ID. Our property ID is located right here in sheet four, located right here in B3. So that's good to go right there. Transaction is going to be sheet four K3. All right, our unit IDs in this case is going to be B4, B4, we're gonna update that, actually B4 here, B4, and then our transaction ID is actually located in K3, so update this one to K3. K3 is gonna take on our transaction ID, so A, B, and C, we have all in, we have our file path in here, so now we're good to go, so we're gonna add that attachment. So let's just take a quick review of that in the attachment database, we have our attachment ID, our unit ID, our transaction ID should be in D, so I need to update that, and our file path in E, so let's do that. D is where we're taking our transaction ID, we're gonna copy this, right, add one more additional row, add in the unit ID in C, C, so now we need to update that unit id is where we want okay unit so we have attachment id property id unit id we're saving everything there okay and unit id is located here in b4 so then we need to update that so property id located in b3 now we're good to go property db3 unit id b4 that looks good let's go ahead and a transaction we might as well add this one attachment load remember we need to update this accordingly but i'm only focused on those with the transaction ids in this case attachments here in this case i'm going to add in a transaction this is going to be our criteria here so i'm going to add only those attachments that are due with this specific transaction id we haven't placed in any in there but when we do we will so that's what we want to do so we're going to make just a few updates so attachment load m4 let's clear out making sure that we've got the right m4 all the way through m11 we're going to clear those out just as we want sheet you know, focus on sheet attachment load this is, should be sheet four right we're loading transaction attachment load we're going to load that's not sheet 11 we're focused on sheet four so that's what we want sheet four m actually it's here m11 with sheet 11 that's our attachments we're going to focus on this let's write that in here attachment database good so we've got our attachments database we're going to focus on our transaction id this is what i want but our transaction id is going to come from where it's coming from in this case k3 k3 and then where's it going to go it's going to go i'm going to put it directly inside here in m3 m3 is where we want to place it so m3 equals i3 m3 equals i3 that's exactly what m3 is where we want to put it. it's going to come directly from k3 k3 is where we want it so we'll update that k3 now we got it right so that's going to take that transaction id and put it directly in m3 now we're going to determine the last transaction row good we're going to add in our last advanced filter based on our last transaction row. we're going to add in an advanced filter and then we're going to run the criteria criteria is going to be not this case l2 it's going to be m m2 through m3 m3 right because our criteria in this case is our transactions let's go back into the attachments m2 through m3 here is the only criteria because i want to base it on this our results are going to come here and then we're going to take any results and we're going to bring them in there so let's add that in so m2 our results are going to come there so we're going to say m4 through m11 and sheet 4 is going to equal to 03 through 010 bring over the file attachments uh, that looks pretty good let's take a look at that and then we'll go ahead and add attachments so now we've got those let's assign that macro inside the transactions what we're going to do is right click assign the macro add the attachments so we're going to go this is of course transactions add attachments so we're focused on transaction add attachment that's the one we want so clicking add attachments we're going to select an attachments anything is going to go up here it's fine there just any attachment there we've got the attachment now what we want to do is take a look inside so we've got everything here good that looks pretty good transaction we've got the the property id i've got the unit id i've got the transaction id and i've got that 
the attachment there. So we're good to go on that. Now all we need to do is just ensure that it's going to actually load inside those transactions. So load, bringing that in. So it's going to be loading in. So here's the one. Let's take a look at that. All right, good. So all we need to do is just make sure it's brought into the right sheet. So inside the transactions, here it is right here, just the way I want it. Perfect. Click add new. It's cleared out. That's good. I also need notice that it didn't clear. It out. I don't want to clear these out on add new. Add new shouldn't clear out existing ones. So let's update that. I, want, I don't want add new to do that because I want to show those existing ones there. Theoretically, we could log, but let's not clear those out. Let's keep D4. I'm going to let's do that. I like that better. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this Mac again. Recent transactions. I'm going to load those. So now we click add new. At least the recent transactions are going to be here. I kind of like that. So click add new. Good, good. All right. So we've got delete. Let's assign the macro. We've already created that. And then we'll click assign macro. And then we're focused on the transactions delete. So it's one right here. Click OK. And I'm going to create a temporary transaction, making sure we select a property. I'm going to just test this out with any unit here. And then we'll put in a type because those are required and an amount. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So we're going to click save. Click OK. It's been saved. And now what we're going to do is I want to delete this. Are you sure you want to delete? Let's click no. Now let's click yes. OK. It's been deleted. I like it. Good. Very good. All right. That looks good. This is a little bit stretched out here. But I want to cancel new. What about if I want if I want to cancel new, I'm going to just load whatever's recently up here. If I click add new, I don't want to click cancel new. So let's write that in. So let's take a look. I don't think we have that. Let's go ahead and write that in. But write it in under here. So let's call this sub transaction. We're going to have to get to the dashboard next week. Cancel new because we are over time. OK, but I do want to make sure we get those uh, reminders because I'm going to show you that. Then we'll do the dashboard next week. It's going to be a lot of training, but I'm going step by step. I know you guys love that. OK, so what do I want to do? If sheet four dot range D4, because that's the most recent transaction, dot value does not equal empty, then I want to select it. It's pretty simple. Then sheet Four. We can do some one line of code. Sheet four dot range D four dot select. Pretty simple. That's it. Cancel new one line of code. And of course, if it is empty, that means there's no transactions. And if there's no transactions, they have to at least create one before we can go out of the add new states. So I'm going to just select on here, select on here, right click, assign the macro, paste that macro that we just created right in here. Uh, not that one. Let's see. So it's transactions and then cancel new this one right here. Good. So let's click on that. Perfect. That's what I want. Add new, cancel new. Uh, we signed it the macro to this, but not this button. So let's make sure we sign it to both those clicking on both of those and then assign the macro again, once again, and then transactions and then cancel new. OK, so I'm going to make sure it's assigned to both the button and the icon. Perfect. OK, we've got add new, we've got update, we've got delete, we've got everything working in here and we've got uh, we're loading the attachments just the way we like it. Perfect. All right, so let's continue on. Let's do the alerts and reminders before I want to let you go. I want to show you how we do that. That's even simpler and I'm going to walk you step by step through it. OK, moving into the alerts and reminders. This is simple. Basically, what I want to do is I want to select on a recent alert, select it and be able to add and edit update. I want the alert ID here. So that's important. And I also want to put in a date and a time for the alert so we know when the alerts can go. And just a few information here, just a few things. So I want to know the alert row. It's going to be based on the alert ID. So the alert row. And I also want to know the next alert ID. So that's obviously pretty simple there. So equals if error again we're going to use the max this is a great way to learn and we're repeating a lot of it which really helps you to learn these things solid so we're going to be using the max when use the alert id plus one and if there's no data i'm going to add it to one okay so that's it so that's going to get our next alert alert row it's going to be based on whatever is located right here so we've got some data in our alerts database i just have three of them so basically if it's one i want to put in four so let's take a look inside our alerts and then set that up using an index match and also around if error equals if error as we always do and then we're going to use i want the row so we're going to use match and then based on the value, based on what value, based on this value right here, and we're going to base it on the alert ID and then zero on an exact match. If for some reason there's an error, I just want it empty. So that's it. Perfect. All right. So let's left justify that 
and then also give it a nice color just so we actually all these so we give it the same consistent color so we know that it's for admin purposes and then I, I always do borders around it all right so we're good to go so that we got the alert row we got the next alert ID that's pretty much it all we need here so I want an alert name a date a time those are required details are not required so let's go in and let's go in again I'm going to do this transaction macros I'm going to take this I'm going to do control a we're not going to use everything exactly but it's going to help us I'm going to go into the alert macros here control a and then paste all that in again we're going to do the same thing using copy and replace first thing what we want to do is I'm going to use control f and run that find and what am I looking for I'm looking for anything that says transaction and then I'm going to replace it with actually let's go with transaction just in case the word transaction first we're going to use the longest word transaction anywhere that's found I'm going to replace only in the current module very important I'm going to replace it with the word alert now I'm going to replace all now it's three of them which is fine now I'm going to look for trans t-r-a-n-s and I'm going to replace that with alert. So replace all that's 56 times in this module. And also again, wherever transactions are located, they were located in sheet four. In this case, we're focused on alert, which is sheet five. So anywhere sheet four is found, we're going to replace it with sheet five. Okay. So then we're going to place all this cancel out of that, even though we have to do it one more time. Let's find it sheet four, replacing it with sheet five. Okay. Sheet five now we're good in the current module replace all and also the database any notations of the database our transactions was focused on sheet 9 while our alerts database is located here on sheet 10 perfect so going from sheet 9 to sheet 10 relatively simple let's say we're going to cancel out of that one more time go back inside here and then just update that accordingly in this case sheet 9 replacing it with sheet 10 in the current module so that's going to give us a really good head start on this. So then sheet 10. So we're placing all, make sure those are spelled. All right. So we've placed all of them. And now we can go ahead and customize that accordingly. So we have alert row, alert column. We need that alert ID. That's good. Alert. And let's see what else. Last alert row. That's going to help us. Uh, attachment row. Last unit row. Probably don't need that. And then uh, let's continue on. See last unit row, file dog, file path. We don't need this. We don't need the file folder. And we don't need the file path because we're not adding specific alerts. We're not adding attachments, right? There's no attachments here. So we don't need the file folder dialog. We don't need that macro. In fact, we can just go ahead and clear those attachment macros out. So alert attached, there's no such thing as that. So we can clear that out. Alert add, we can delete that as well. There's no specific attachments for alerts, although you could create those. We didn't do a cancel new is good. Alert delete. We need that alert load recent alerts. We're going to need that loading the recent alerts. And uh, let's take a look here. We're going to need that alert load important alert add new. We need that. Sure. Alert save update. We need that get unique alerts and we're not going to need that. So nothing like that. So we can clear that out. So you see how quickly we can do that. Now all we need to do is update it. And the reason we're able to do it quickly is because our designs are very similar. These similar screens using similar designs really helps to speed up the coding. So the first thing you want to do is save and update, right? Just now as you start to uh, practice these, you can realize it's going to be a lot easier. You can probably pretty much figure out we, if we don't have a row here, we know that it's going to be new. So let's delete that. I'm going to clear out and make sure that it is a new row. Make sure that it is blank inside our alerts and reminders here. So now, now it's blank. It's not found. That's what I want. So for new one. So what we're going to do right here. So we're going to do sheet. We're going to add in some required fields. We need an alert name. We need a uh, time and we need a date. So I would say G5, I5 and K5 are all required. So let's make that update inside that. So G5, I5 and K5, I5 and also K5 are all required. That's just those three required. So we can clear this last one out. We don't need that. And so if those are, if it says if G5, I5 or K5, okay, K5, not K9, are empty, then let's say missing, in this case, alert name, date, time. So let's just put those in here. Alert, let's call this name, date, and time. Okay, please make sure to add all required fields, name, date, time. Okay, exit sub. So now we have that with sheet five, that's our alerts and reminders, perfect. B5 is empty, in this case, our alert row is B4, or B4. If B4 is empty, it's a new record. Alert row is gonna be sheet 10, the first available alert. And remember, sheet 10 is our alerts database, that's good. In this case, we're gonna put in the next alert ID. Our next alert ID, right, is gonna be 
located in B5. So we want to put that B5. And I also want to take whatever's in B5 and I want to place it in the first column in A, right? I want to make sure that in our alerts database, we have our alert IDs placed in column A. So now that we have that, we can continue on. So we continue on. Otherwise, it is an existing alert row. In this case, would be B4, right? B4 is our alert row, not B5. Okay, so we want to make that update. Alert row. So again, let's take a look at the columns. What columns? We're going to start out, alert ID is taken care of. So we're going to start out in column two, and we're going to go all the way to column in this case, column eight, but actually not all the way that because the alert in this case, I want to put something like uh, the date and time. This information is going to be VBA. I'm going to take care of this. These don't have alert. I want to know when it was alerted and I want to know the row. This I'll have. I won't use data mapping for this. So I'm only going to go right to here. So I'm just going to go to column five. That's it. So column five is fine enough. So from two to five, this is going to be relatively simple. Two to five. That's all we need to do. Everything else here will take care of the alert. We could call this alerted. Let's call this alerted on. I think that's better because once the alert is created, I don't want to duplicate it. So I want to make sure alerted on. I'll put the date and time here. I also want to know the row of this. And we'll use VBA to add that in. And the date and time, I'm going to use the combination of the date and time here. I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to use VBA to do that. So we'll do a little bit of data mapping. So let's do that. Two to five, double check our information. Sheet 10, alert row, alert column, sheet 10. Okay, that's good. So now, but I want to add in a few more lines of code. What is F? So in this case, sheet 10 dot range F. So I want to have them separately and I want to have them together. Both are going to help F and the alert row dot value equals, what is it? It's pretty much whatever is in, let's say the date plus the time, I5 plus K5. So it's dot range i5 plus right when we're, we have the date and time we're simply adding them together because the time is in decimal format right the date is in a whole number when we combine them it can create a date and a time together i5 plus in this case k5 k5 is the time right i've got them i've got them up here and i've also got them right here in the alerts and reminders i5 plus k5 okay and that's going to put that in right there so let's take a look, i5 and then we can just copy this and then paste and change it up to k5 and then put in K5 and then update that. So that equals date and the time. And I also want to put in the row number. So that's going to be, I want to put that in H. Let's take a look here. H, correct. I want to put it H. This is going to be once they loaded. This is going to come later on, right? We won't fill that in just yet. So H is going to take on our row. So again, all I'll do is I'm just going to copy this. I'll update it to H here. And then I want to put in a formula and then equals the row. I want that formula to go in there because I want to know the row. When I make those updates, when I add in those, I want to know where. So equals. So basically, I'm just going to equals row. That's all I want to do here. Just want to put the row number in. And that's going to stay consistent. I'm using a formula because if for some reason one row gets deleted or when we delete alerts, then the rows stay consistent regardless of even if a row gets deleted. That's why we're using a formula. So it becomes a dynamic row. So we've got the date and time combined. We've got the row number existing group that's going to we're going to show that everything is going to go alert saver update i think we're good to go on the save so let's save our work here let's give it a try alert save update this again is the same macro that we're going to assign both to alert and the save so that's just how we're going to do it so clicking on the update here the button i'm going to right click again sign those macros just as we've done before with the other screens pasting in that and i'm also going to do the same thing with the save button so i'm going to bring this down here save is also what i want same macro so right clicking on here assigning that macro pasting that in okay good now again we can bring those up i'm going to make those the same on the center and i'm going to make those the same because we're only showing one at the same time good so i like that alert id okay we don't need that here just yet we're going to add in a brand new one so let's just call this february rent due and then we'll call this for let's just say unit 101 we can give it any name and then the date let's just say it's going to be due on the last day of the month so 131 and we know time of five o'clock p.m and then that should format accordingly if you want to update you don't want to see the seconds on that we can change that we can update it's already formatted at the time but we can modify that right we can change that to 1 30 p.m we don't need to see the seconds here so it is just say uh let's say lisa unit 101 rent due okay and obviously the save and the update is the same macro so in this case we'll just click update but it's been saved our buttons disappear let's take a look inside the alert database okay double check on that 
let's see that okay perfect that's good just the way we want it uh january 31st we've got the rent the time is okay decimal format is no problem here it's fine just the way it is as i mentioned it's a decimal and the date is a whole number in this case combining them is going to do that we've got the row number we've got the details i've got the alert id everything looks good inside the alerts okay great so we've got the ad now let's go and focus on add new remember updates going to work just fine delete we're going to fill those out and of course i want the recent alerts to load up here so let's add those in let's continue on save and update is working just fine let's do the add new a lot less fields here i'm going to keep the recent alerts here add new all i want to do is pretty much clear out g i and k5 and then of course g through k7 so it's going to be relatively simple so let's clear these out here g5 will keep those in this case g5 i5 and k5 that looks good probably going to do k3 we need to clear that out as well so let's put in that let's add in k3 that's kind of important because that's going to ensure that we have the right k3 g5 g7 in this case g7 through k7 through k7 which is the way we want everything else is cleared out we're not using anything else so that looks pretty good relatively straightforward for the add new and that's just what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna right click here again assign the macro and this we're focused on alert so alert and then this is going to be called the add new the first one available here clicking on add new okay good just what we want to do now let's update the cancel again we want to make sure we load in the recent alerts so add new so alert load we need to load in previous alerts so when we select on one we want to load those recent alerts so we can do that we don't need this that's not we're not going to use that with sheet five if b5 equals empty then please select a correct alert from list that looks pretty good except it's not b4 our alert row is both based on b4 going to update that so the alert row again is based on b4 we don't need this right that was only for a specific for transactions so we can clear that out we don't need that we're going to be in this case we're going to be loading not we're going to be loading from two to five two to five okay that's all we do we don't need to load anything else sheet 10 this looks good this looks good okay so everything else is good so but we need to know what to alert we need to select something to alert so what i want to do is i want to load recent alerts let's add an s onto that so let's do that again i'm going to have the alert id show up here i'm going to have the alert name show up here when we select something i'm going to take that id whatever's here i'm going to place it directly in k and then what we're going to do is run the macro to load very much the same this is a great way to learn the last alert row is going to be based on sheet 10 the last one we know the last row so that's good again the last alert row if it's less than four then we're going to exit the sub out I want to delete any criteria actually in this case why don't we just load in alerts only alerts that have not been alerted so I, maybe i would do want a criteria in here what do i want let's put in a criteria what do i mean let's say i want to know only alerts where this is blank right so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to place it directly inside let's say here alert it on okay but i only want to know when it's blank right i don't want to, when it's when it's blank i don't want to know anything that's alerted. so all i need to do is just put in equals on here so all i want to do is just equals right so in case it's equals i just want to do that nothing else is there i'm going to call that criteria so we've got our criteria here and now what we want to do is let's just give it a color so we give it a similar color here so now we've got our criteria here and i just want the blank ones so nothing else we can do here so where are we going to put our results our results i want to put our results somewhere and we'll take them we'll put them on starting on let's just say and so we'll go ahead and center that just make a look this is where i want our results we can just pretty much copy everything and put it there we won't use everything and i'll put the result and i'll just put them right here so that way everything is there in case we need it and we're going to load those up in the future we'll use that so i'm going to put the results right here so copy this just for the format itself and then results they're going to go right here. I'll merge and center that here. And then we're good to go on that. So we're going to merge and center that. What I want to do is basically I want to load everything in this case. But in this case, I just really want the alert name and the alert ID. That's all I really need. And bring that over. And so, but I just want to make sure that it's only those which have not been alerted. So that's fine because then once they've been alerted, we don't need that. Of course, you can change that if you want to update yours. So let's go do that right now inside the macro. So we're going to run our advanced filter. We're going to base it all the way on. Let's just take a look at the last alert row. Let's go back into the alert database. Going to base it on column A, which is our last reserve row. Once we get that, we're going to 
bring it all over here. I don't need anything else. Just bring it up to, let's say, F or something like that. And so we can clear. We're not going to be sorting these alerts. So we could, in this case, ah, we should probably, I'll keep the sort on. That's kind of handy. So that way, the first one you create, you always know where it is. It's kind of handy. So let's go ahead and focus on that. It's going to go all the way to H on this and the last resort alert row. So we're going to go all the way to H. And then what I want to do is I do want to add a criteria. So criteria range is going to be equal to in this case dot range l2 through l3 so l not value 2 through l3 i'll clear that out so that's our criteria range and we're going to copy that to where do i want to copy that to i'm going to copy that all the way through let's just say n2 but in this case uh bring it all the way to u2 because we'll be using that a little bit later on okay so then again uh, let's why don't we do another sort by date so the first thing we want is the last alert row we want to determine the last alert row let's just copy this again so we have it again and i'll just set it up one more time and this time i'm going to base the last alert row is going to be based on n in this case so i'm going to change that and base it on n in this case n we also use sometimes last uh, uh, results row we've often used that so we've got the sort i want to sort it based on the date so the most recent up so we're going to do sort fields clear sort by date is what we're doing we're adding the key in this case the key is going to be based on date so it's going to be p3 i want to do it be based on a p3 so now that we have that here and we have all the dates so let's continue on so now we've got there we're going to sort on the normal based on p3 continuing on so the results so we want to sort i'm going to sort the entire range all the way from n3 all the way over to u and the last alert row the last alert row minus one also minus one because our last one's here and four actually we already updated it, so we don't need to minus one why is that because we don't need to minus one because we've updated it here we've reset it based on the last resort row based on here now we're good we can also do just to make sure there is data but there should be data so if the last alert row is less than three then we can just exit the sub that means there's no data exit sub okay there's no data nothing to go on so we don't need to continue on if it's less than three that means we have no no alerts so continuing on we've now applied once we apply that so we can move on now with sheet five inside our alerts i want to place what do i want to place in this case i want to place n through o i only want to place n through o so n three through o and the last alert row that's going to bring in the alert details bring in the alert details okay so let's run that code see if there's any issue I'll maximize this maximize this so let's go back into the alerts and reminders here we have our alert great so now all i need to do is actually we got to make sure it's four make sure i got to update that that didn't so c4 through d in the last alert row again we're starting in four here right notice that but in our alert database, we're starting on three. So we need to add one. That's why it didn't work. That's why it kind of covered up our plus one. Okay, make sure you do it plus because it's starting here. So we need to. So that's why. Let's go ahead back into alerts and reset that up. So this is called recent alerts. So remember, we're starting in a different row. Okay, so we're good to go on that. Now all I would do is select this and load the results. So we can pretty much do that through VBA very, very simply. So we've already got, we, why don't we go with alert delete since we're here already. Alert row is going to be located in this case in B4. B4, if sheet 5 B4 goes empty, then please select an alert to delete. Okay, so exit the sub. Now, if assuming that it is, alert row is going to be B4, right? That's our alert row. Sheet 10, alert row, lower entire row delete alert add new perfect that's going to do d4 we can do this cancel new d4 if she 5 d4 equals empty then she d5 select okay good so we've got the rest of that very very simple it will save our work now what i want to do is i want to load that before i let you i want to make sure to load that when we select on that so how do we do that that would be of course inside the selection range and we're going to base it on that low so let's go ahead and copy that alert load here copy that then i'm going to go inside the alert screen right here going to go all the way up inside alerts all right focus on the alert sheet here alerts and reminders we're going to write in a selection change we actually make a selection change so it's worksheet selection change when we make a selection change, if not selection change what are we focused on d4 through and then down let's say large row d4 all the way through d 999 nothing and what and we need to make sure c contains a value c is where our id is located and range c and the target dot row dot value does not equal empty then what do we want to do then the first thing i want to do is take whatever id and place it into k 
three. So range k three dot value equals okay. What's going to equals range c just like we did before c and the target we could have copied and pasted that dot row dot value okay so that's first and then we're going to run the macro load run macro run macro to load alert and then we'll just copy that condition and we can actually copy the condition of formatting and make that update so we've got transactions i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste the formulas formats paste special let's We'll focus on that alert attached load. We don't want attachment load. And this is going to be just load, not load attachment. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so let's update that. Okay, that's going to be fine. Let's reset that. All right, so we've got that. And let's just update that. What I want to do is I want to, let's take a look. Alert load. No, 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 no. We don't have attachments here. We don't need that. Okay, so there's no attachments. We don't need that. That's fine. And then we're going to save our work here. We're good. Let's go back out of here. And tell this is what run macro to load alert. That's what I want to do. And uh, I want to paste that conditional formatting. Let's do that once more. Copy that. I want to add conditional formatting. Right click, paste special, and then paste the formats and then make the updates. Click OK. Now go back into home and then conditional formatting and manage the rules and take a look and just make that update. Edit. OK. Focus on G5. In this case, what I want is the alert name is going to be based on G5. That looks good. And D4 does not equal G5. OK. That looks good. I want to make sure we got to update this that didn't load correctly. That's okay. I'm going to why is that? Because I didn't add the three to that, right? If we locate alert row is plus three. What do you mean by that? Our alert row is the first alert row is located here. Trans alerts database, right? Our first is four. I don't want to load one. I want four. That's what I want. So let's take a look at that. Select on there. That's the way we want it. Perfect. Load details. We did have details. I don't think that loaded. G7. Let's check that mapping here details take a look inside here our details not on g5 they're g7 okay there we go that update mapping correct now let's go back in here select on again perfect now our details came in here save our work very very good all right let's take a look we'll assign the macro to delete almost done with this training we're at 90 minutes so far we didn't even get to the dashboard that's gonna have to be next week assign the macro alert delete click ok Update, add new, we've got that. Let's take a look. So let's go ahead and add new, test that out. Just run a little bit of test here and then uh, making sure our delete's working before I let you go. Just change the time on that, 12 a.m. Anytime is fine. Save that, click save or update, okay. Update, but I wanna make sure that came in here. Good, that got saved, but what I wanna do is I wanna load it. I wanna load that recent alerts. When I save something, I want it to run that macro. So let's do that. So close this out, right? Save or update, that's what I want. But what I, one thing I want is I wanna load those macros in. So let's call this not load units, not units, sorry, not there. I wanna go into the alerts here and we have the macro. Let's make this bigger so we can see it. We have load recent alerts. So as soon as I save an alert, I want to load it up there, right? So here, notice save it update. So that's what I'm going to do. As soon as I save it, I want to run this macro that's going to load it. As soon as I update it. So if I update it, click OK. And now we go. Now it's updated. That's just what I want. OK, oh, step. we got to add the conditional formatting of that. Let's go back and update that. Notice it should be automatically updated. Notice that the, our apply to is not correct. So we want to, our apply to is only on one row. So we need to update that to all the rows, right? Our apply to needs to contain all the rows that we want. So there we go. When you click apply, you want to make sure that this doesn't update that. G5, D4. OK, good. I like that. Click apply. Click OK. Good test. Okay, now it's working just right. Now let's click delete. Are you sure you want to delete? No. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. In this case, delete. Okay, good. The only thing is, again, on delete, I want to run the macro to refresh this list. So let's do that again. So we've got this is the macro that I want to run on delete. Copy that. Go back down to delete, right? Add new. And then what maybe right before add new and then clear run that macro. So now when we delete, it's gonna work properly. Good. So let's go ahead and select this and then we'll update it. That's gonna update this list. Now it's already gone. That's what I want. All right, delete's working great. Awesome. We've had a really cool training. In this training, I showed you how to create brand new transactions, how to load transactions, how to save, how to automatically get the property name and the unit based on the found range. So that was really cool. We showed you how to add attachments to specific uh, incomes and expenses that we had. We also did the alerts and reminders, how to add conditional formatting and select on them, as well as how to delete. In the next training, the final part four, we're going to show you this dashboard. I've been promising it, but we've had a lot to cover going step by step. We're going to create an incredible 
dashboard you won't want to miss i promise that's going to be coming up next week thank you for sticking with me on these step-by-step -step training i really hope you're learning a lot also if you like these trainings want to help us out i've got 175 of my best workbook i've packed them all into a single zip file and i'm putting that on sale for just 66 dollars for a short time that would be great if you can pick that up because of course that includes also a complete library so you can select on any one workbook and open it up or select on a youtube video and watch the training great workbook people love it all right i hope you grab that thanks so much don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next week for part four on the dashboards thanks again